being blue Only just a while ago I told him I was through He did not rebuke me With arms of strong embrace Picked me up and carried me Sometimes, uh, sometimes you're praying and you want the Lord to uh, to help the church, what the church might need and what I might need, and uh, it's pretty amazing uh, the singing and then the last special uh, title of the message tonight is "Storms Are for Certain." Amen. I'm gonna tell you what. Listen to me. I don't like storms. <laughs> but you're going to have storms. And if you're not in one right now, one's coming. And, and for certain, they're coming. Okay? So you might be on the mountain tonight, and you're not built for the mountain because you're going to be in a valley. We're built for the valley. I don't like the valley. I, I Listen, I'd rather just live in the blessing. Seriously. But that's not how it rolls. Because, you know, we would get too comfortable up on the map. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Don't, give me, don't, don't give me ahead of myself, will you please? Matthew chapter 14, begin verse number 22. We'll read a few verses and then we'll get right into the message. Matthew 14, beginning in verse number 22. And straightway Jesus constrained His disciples to get into a ship and to go before Him unto the other side and He sent the multitudes away. 
Let, let's pray, and I want to get you seated because I got I got some things I want to talk about. Father, thank you for tonight. Uh, Lord, I love this church, I really do, honestly, and I love the preacher, uh, love the assistants, love all the people who try to be a help. The Paul, all the brother, friend, all of them in here, Lord God. What an amazing thing you've done. It's only by your grace, and we're just so thankful. I was just thinking tonight, as I was sitting there, where would people be tonight if there was no Liberty Baptist Church? My soul. So I pray, Lord God, that you'd speak to our hearts. I pray you be with the preacher. I know his heart's here. And I pray you'd be with him. I pray you'd comfort him. I pray, Lord God, you'd encourage him. I pray you'd be able to preach the Word of God tonight. Use him mightily this week in team camp. And uh, we'll be careful to give the praise. I want to hear from heaven tonight. I want to hear from Joe Kaiser tonight. I want to hear from heaven tonight. I pray you'd use your Word. And we'll be careful to give the praise, the honor, and the glory. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. I'll just go down a little bit in these verses and, and then I'll, I'll get into the message. Uh, I want you to think for a minute. Look at verse 23. And when he sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. Now, 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 I want you to think for a minute. So here's Jesus. 100% God and 100% man. And he's got to get away from everybody to get along to pray. Yeah. Wait a second. Wait, what, are you, what are you talking about? The Son of God has to do that? How much more do we need to recognize that? Amen. I mean, you listen. Let, let, let me just say this. Ready? You ready? If I go up where my wife reads her Bible... And, and and I leave my man cave downstairs. Can I get a witness right there? I got a man cave. And my, and my wife actually put the sign up there. Come on, are you serious? Man, it's awesome to have a man cave. Amen? Amen. And if I come out of my man cave, and I go up where my wife is reading her Bible, do you know what we're going to do? We are going to talk. Come on, listen. That's not the time to talk. Come on, come on. There ought to be a place. Come on now. There ought to be a place where you can get away and it's you and God and nobody else. There's got to be a place. There needs to be a specific place. Now, let me just say this to you. I, my heart bleeds for mothers. Because these kids, you can't ever get away from your kids. <laughs> Seriously. I'm glad God made me a man. Amen. I'm just saying, amen. I have no desire to be a woman. Seriously. Amen. Zero. Absolutely zero. I ain't changing. I ain't cross dressing. Ain't happening with me. I'm telling you, right? Not happening. Amen. Amen. That was not God's design. He created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. I'm just saying. Okay? But if the Son of God had to pull away from everybody else and get alone to pray? Yeah. Wow. Can I help you here? Amen. If we're ever going to have this country go into revival, yeah. it's going to be by praying. That's right. Amen. Now let me just tell you this, right? Right, watch. Prayer is talked a lot about, but not a lot done. Wow. Amen. I'm speaking to me tonight. And if you sit on the front row, you always have to be responsible and pay attention. Because if you don't pay attention, I will take you out like a scout. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Seriously. Mm. Now watch. Now, I don't know about you, but when you get around people, people equal problems. Uh oh. Yep. Did you ever get around somebody like you didn't want to ask them how they are doing? Amen. <laughs> Like they're going to read you a book. I've been around some people in the ministry like that. Amen. But I, I, I just want, I want you to think for a minute. Now, here you go. So the Son of God has got to get away from everybody else to pray. Wow. Now, 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 let me be honest with you. Ready? This, this, this phone right here can be a blessing or it can be a curse. Yeah. It takes me 
35 minutes, I waffle fast for this, it takes me 35 to 40 minutes to communicate people Bible verses and some kind of challenge every single day. And then, watch, watch, if I take away my time for what I need to do with the Lord, then guess what? That needs to stop. Amen. Come on, come on, listen to me. And so many times in life we put things far above God. Yeah. And we're busy about a lot of stuff, but to be honest with you, we're busy about the wrong stuff. Yeah, amen. Seriously, I, I'm, sorry. I just, I'm, going, I'm going down memory lane, I'm sorry. I remember when this was an office up here. There was offices yeah. up here. That's right. I, mean, there, I, 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 I remember when I came with your preacher, we're looking at the building, he said, what do you think? You think we can take the walls out? What, 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 what do you think it could look like in here? Amen. Hello? Six years ago. I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I just turned 60, May 24th. Do you know the time is going really fast? Yeah, I know. November 29th, I'll be married 40 years. Whoa. Time. Time does not stop. That's right. Miss Kim, don't be think sad. I'm, saying, I'm getting old. Don't even start. Did you make that college? Don't watch it over Okay, we don't want to go there. I mean, come on, you're all right. Good. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Sort of like somebody else was 29 or 26. But anyway, here we go. Watch, right, here we go. Here we go. And when he, we're still verse 33. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Now watch, but the ship, well, verse 24 now, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Watch it. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Now look at the next verse. And Peter answered him and said, Lord... If it be thou, wait, wait, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Stop here for a minute. He already told him who it was. <laughs> Amen. You ready? It is I. Ain't nobody else using that I thing. Come on now. But he's still questioning who he is. Can I ask you something? Did did the apostles ever get it? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, they didn't have a Bible. Now watch. So then I go to my thing. Have I ever got it? Oh. I mean, I got, I got everything. Yeah, and they didn't have that. I mean, I got the whole thing from cover to cover. Yeah. And I ain't got it yet. Yeah. Hello? Amen. That's good. Did, did they get it? There's only one person. I mean, seriously. I mean, the imitator devil can make people walk on water too. But in this moment of time, it's the Lord. Now watch what happens. Look what happens. Come on. You all know the story probably, but it's okay. Here we go. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now wait a second here. Now we can say a lot of things about Peter, right? Like Peter made a lot of mistakes. How many of you have made, ever made some mistakes? Come on, seriously. Are you kidding me? But he's the only water walker besides Jesus. That's right. He is the only person who got out of the boat. Anybody else volunteer? Nope. <laughs> I sort of mirror myself a little bit like Peter. Sometimes I'll do something I, I didn't really think it all through. <laughs> and then you get out there, <laughs> and you think, thinking, what in the world did I get into? Amen. Hello? Yeah. Insert foot into mouth many times. Remember Peter? <laughs> hey, if everybody leaves you, if everybody curses you, if everybody forsakes you, not me. Not me. I'll be willing to die for you, and not too long after that, what happens? He denies Christ. Now you can get on Peter all you want. But let me just say something. He's the only one who got out of the boat. <laughs> Ready, watch. Peter's the only one who preached the first service 
in the church of Jerusalem, and 3,000 get saved on the first service. That's right. <laughs> Do you ever have that happen in your life? No. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, we get excited when one person gets saved. Yeah. You want to talk about having a building problem? Right. Church of Jerusalem had a building problem right off the bat. Amen? Amen. Got a little building problem right here? <laughs> can I help you? God can solve it all. Amen? Come on. <laughs> Just got to get out in the water. Come on. Walk on the water. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Here you go. Ready, watch. Verse 30. And then 31, they'll get the message. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink, and he cried, saying, Lord, a long prayer. Is that what he said? That's not what he said. He said, Lord, save me! Can I help you here? When you get saved, and you're in trouble, you don't have to use flowery words. No, amen. You gotta say, Lord, help! Pretty close, isn't it? Come on, seriously. Amen. My wife and I were coming from vacation Bible school. We were in Jeanette, Pennsylvania. I was on the Schuylkill, I called it the Short Kill Expressway. Those people get killed in that thing. People drive like maniacs on that thing. Oh, yeah. Seriously. My truck is at least a half an hour from home. And something begins to happen. Half an hour? How far away? Hour from home? Okay, hour from home. I'm, I stand corrected. Sorry, one hour from home. I'm about 15, 20 minutes from my mother's house. I first think it's a tire. I pull the car over. Then I think it's the brakes. Then I start to hear things drop, and now I find out it's a carrier bearing that sits on the truck that attaches the drive shaft that at any minute, if it drops, I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere. Come on, come on, watch, 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 watch. And I, I'm getting ahead of my message, but watch. At that moment, at that time, do you know the only help I could get? <laughs> yeah. Was God! Are you serious? Amen. My wife began to pray, I began to pray, and I'm praying for God to get this vehicle back someplace where I'm safe. And I can get it parked. Now, 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 now watch this. What I know is this. Whenever God does something great, there's always opposition coming after that. That's right. Now, when you have great blessing, don't expect no opposition coming. So we, we did Jeanette, Pennsylvania, and 14, 14, 14 kids got saved and three teenagers, eternal security. So am I expecting no problems? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I gotta be nuts. Yeah, man. Come on. Ready? Watch. And so now we're, we 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 preach this past week at Easton, PA, and 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 24 kids got saved. Yeah. And a 29 year old showed up on Wednesday night when there was no church, just vacation Bible school, and he came, heard the preaching, and got saved. Come on, yeah. are you serious? So I'm waiting. More opposition is coming. Hello? Now here's our problem. You ready? Watch. When we're in the storm, the problem Peter had is just what we have. We get our eyes off of Jesus and we focus on the circumstances that we're in. And the place we're supposed to be looking is the place we're not looking toward. It's the place we're looking we're going through. And so when we're going through the storm, we focus on circumstances rather than focusing on God. That's where we live. So whatever you're going through, so here's, here's Peter. He's out in the ship. Got out of the ship. He's in the water. Now all of a sudden, he's starting to see what in the world. And he yells. I don't think he went like, Hi. Help. No, I think he let it loose, amen? Like, help! Are you kidding me? Blow your eardrums. You've got big speakers, amen? Blow your eardrums out, amen? Amen. I mean, when you're in trouble, don't you want somebody to hear you? Hello? And the Lord lifts him up. Now, I want to I preach three points. Give me a couple verses. Storms are for certain. First thing you got to do, ready, when you're in a storm is number one. You have to have faith 
and not fear. You have to have faith. Okay, go back to verse 30 and 31. We'll look at where, where Peter was. 30 and 31. I'll give you some Bible verses to go along. You ready? Here he goes. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink, and he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Woo! Woo! That's where I live. Yeah. Huh. I believe, but sometimes I got a little bit of doubt. Mm -hmm. I know God's able. I just want Him to answer a little bit quicker than what He is. Amen. Yeah. I want to live that Burger King Christianity. You ready? I want to put my crown on. I want it now, and I want it my way. That's it. And if you ain't going to give it my way, I'm going to be pouting and sucking on my little thumb. Come on. Come on, this is big time Christianity now. Amen. It's one thing when you get saved. It's a whole other thing to go start living for the Lord. Seriously. So here's Peter. <laughs> Should have had faith, right? He had faith to step out of the ship, didn't he? But he didn't have enough faith to think the Lord could keep him. Faith and not fear. A couple of Bible verses. Turn if you would. Turn to 1 Peter 7, verse 8. 1 Peter 7, verse number 8. Faith and not fear. 1 Peter 1, 7 and 8. That the trying of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth. Though it be tried with fire, might it be found unto the praise and the honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ who having not seen ye in love, in whom, though now ye, you see him not, yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. See, here's the thing. You ready? Watch. Our faith is tried. And one thing's amazing. We're talking a little bit about testimony tonight. But your salvation is eternally secure. Right. That's right. So no matter what you're going through today, <laughs> the end... The end is heaven. <laughs> so scare me with that, right? Come on, I'm thinking about that. Think about it. The trying of your faith. Hey, hey, it's easy to serve God when everything is going good. That's right. You start getting tested when you're going through it. That's right. When you seem like you're the only person that's going through this. <laughs> and nobody has ever had this happen to them. Are you kidding me? Uh -huh. Alright, let me help you. Ready? Book of Job. I'll we'll have to turn here. Job chapter 1. So the Bible says that Satan, you ready? Wanted to test Job. And the Lord said, Has thou considered my servant Job? One who's perfect. Watch it. Upright. Now watch it. Here's the key. Ready? Eschewed evil. You know what that means? When evil came, he ran away from it. Yeah, amen. Do you know where we are? Come on, listen. We want one foot in the world and one foot with the Lord. That's right. We want to experience both sides. The Bible says you cannot serve two masters. That's right. You're going to love the one and hate the other. Yeah. And a man who is unstable in all his ways is like water. So, so watch, here's Job. Job chapter 1. Watch in a 24-hour period, he loses from the richest man in the East to be in the poorest. That's right. He loses 10 of his family members, all his kids. He loses everything he owned. He didn't lose his wife, and that's probably who he needed to lose. Amen? Come on now. <laughs> she was that kind of woman who wasn't very encouraging. Come on now. Seriously. I say this statement all the time. It's very true. Better to want something you don't have than to have something you don't want. Yeah. You think, oh, you know what, I need to get married. You better watch out. Hold on. You might marry somebody you wish you were never married to. Uh-oh. Come on, I'm serious. You need to wait on God 
You know, girls, they get to a certain age at different levels, and they think, Oh, I'm never, oh, I'm never going to get married. Maybe God doesn't want you to get married. Uh-oh. Oh, you're oh, Are you kidding me? Seriously? Oh, why'd you tell me that? Oh, I'm doomed for life. Whoa. <laughs> Some of you girls are high maintenance. Ain't nobody can afford you anyway. Come on now. Seriously. Hello. Mm, call something the dear. Come on now, man. Let me call something a lot of money. I mean, I didn't say nothing. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. <laughs> Hello. Now, here's what you forget. <laughs> watch it. When you get married to a man, watch it. Listen to me. you got to serve him. Uh-oh. And you say, over my dead body, I'm serving him. Are you kidding me? Seriously. Come on, we forget that part, don't we? Now watch, now watch. Now I say this all the time, it's very true. If you want somebody to treat you like a king, you've got to treat them like they're a queen. That's right. That's right. My wife serves me, I serve her. Amen. Sometimes I don't want to. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. But I do. Sometimes everything's not perfect. Amen. We got problems too, huh? So do you. How many here got problems? If you ain't got both hands up, you got problems. Amen. Come on, sir. <laughs> got problems. So now, so now watch. So, so, so here you go. So, so do we have enough faith to believe God, or are we fearful of what's happening? Okay, you ready? Watch. Need more room in this building. So who do you think is going to do that? God. Amen. If we need to build, and God lets us take the rest of that property there. Okay, come on, let me help you here. Amen. Do you think God is able to provide the money for that building? That's right. right. Amen. Well, he's provided this so far. I mean, come on, please. I mean, if we look at what he's done in the past, are you serious? Yeah. The transformations in this building yeah. since the start. Huh? Because the next time you turn around, you have no idea what's changing. Come on, I'm serious. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Come on down. But with God, all things are possible. See, look that out here. The problem is not God. The problem is us. That's right. Oh, it got real quiet now. Yeah. I remember when Southside was building their first building in Philadelphia. And I was working for Pastor Penichetti. I'm passionate. I worked for four years. And Pastor Penichetti said, I'm passionate as he said to Pastor Penichetti, could I borrow Brother Kaiser for about four, maybe maybe about six months to build this building for us? And the whole time God's putting it all together because Pastor Penichetti's got a son in law named Matt Renzi who's training and getting right with God. And God just says, okay, you can move to south side. in a time when they had to have a building put up. Now watch, let me just help you here. You go a little down memory lanes in, in Southside Baptist Church. When I came on the scene, they had the foundation run up and the block run up. I came in working on the floor. It was right around Thanksgiving. And so I came while we were doing the walls, putting the trusses up. So we put the walls up in a day and a half. We put the trusses up in a day. We put 150 sheets of plywood in a day and a half. And we shingled 75 squares of shingles in, in, in two and a half days. In a week and a half, it was on the roof. That's when I was young. <laughs> Mother Coral knows what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> when you're young, <laughs> seriously, working 16, 18, 20 hours, yeah. please. I said all that to say this. The church really didn't have much money. And I remember the preacher saying one time they, they needed a certain amount of money to come in and he went in his office, office and somebody put a bag of money on top of his table. Wow. $25,000. Wow. Come on! Are you serious? Amen. Now wait, wait, wait. Let me have here. Same God, right? Yeah. That's right. Same God. Same God. You say, well, I could use 25000 Yeah, I understand. I could use 25000 too. But watch. 
If God wants to give me 25,000, He can. God could give you whatever you think He needs to give you. But God knows exactly what you need. Yeah, amen. See, God would never give me a million dollars because I'd mess it up. Yeah. I ain't playing no lottery. I'm not gambling. Oh. But now here you go, watch, watch. So the next port of this church. Nothing greater than grace. Is going to go to another level. That's right. And and if you think about it, opposition came at the first level. I had a statement said to me, and I never forgot as long as I live. The statement was this. I think it's Pastor Fish said, New levels, new devils. That's right. I've never forgotten that as long as I live. Lived. I'm still living. <laughs> but now here's our problem. We have a hard time believing in God who we do not see. And we have a hard time with faith because we really don't know what's going to happen. We'd rather have things all figured out. Come on, come on. How many people like change? I mean, seriously. Listen, I did not plan on moving to New Jersey. I was fine in Pennsylvania. Portals were probably fine in Maryland. Hello? But you never know what God is going to do. And sometimes you got to step out by faith Amen. and not fear. Proverbs chapter 3, 5 to 7, you don't have to turn there. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto, all, unto the, thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. That's not you directing. That's God directing. You know, sometimes in life, we have no idea what God wants to do in our life because we never surrender to God. That's it. There's some of you young people in this room may have never given your life to the Lord. Maybe you never came to a point where you said, you know what? You ready? I surrender. Yeah, amen. Ready? Some of you middle-aged, young people, older people, maybe you never surrendered to the Lord. You never know what God is going to do until you surrender. Amen. Now watch. To surrender takes some faith. Amen. But do you want to know inside of our heart and mind what we want to do? We want to fear. Come on. We want to fear. Yeah. Fear. So you're in the storm. Peter's in the storm. He said, oh man, it's an all I, I don't even know if he had a minute to think. But he stepped out of the boat and that quick, that quick, it hits him. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Have you ever been in a storm and you felt like you're all by yourself? Amen. Amen. Turn to my verse with 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. First Corinthians 10, 13. If you don't know this verse, don't memorize this verse, underline verses, it's a tremendous verse out. Okay. Somebody's going to read that for me. You're going to read it. But Frank, oh, my kids got that. Man, the girls got their hands up. Like... <laughs> okay, just wait. I'll get another one. Thanks. There hath no bro, brother Frank, come on now. Project it out, bro. There you go. The whole world's got enough. Come on, please. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But such is what? Common demand. Hey, the ice cream truck is here. You can't get an ice cream. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I live in <laughs> Philadelphia. When I hear that ice cream truck, I'm thinking, Mr. Softy's out there. I'm ready to roll. That's what it was. It's Mr. Softy. I'm ready for an ice cream right now. I'm glad I'm Frank. <laughs> there hath no temptation you, temptation taken you, but such as is common demand. But God is whoa, faithful. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who's faithful? God is faithful. So no matter what you're going through. Watch, watch, watch. Not... Not even if you're faithful, God's still faithful. I, I, can I help you here? I can't get over the fact. Yeah, go ahead. 
that God is faithful Amen. even when I'm not faithful to Him. And God loves me when I don't love Him the way I should. I, 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 I just can't go. I just can't go. Because you ready? I love you if you love me. If you don't love me, I don't love you. Uh -oh. City of brotherly love. I call it the city of brotherly shove. <laughs> we'll shove you back. We ain't loving you back. We're going to shove you back. Amen? Seriously. Go down with it. All right, go ahead, Brother Frank. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Fine. We will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. All right, so watch, watch, watch. So here's God. You get in your little corner. Sucking on your little thumb. Woe is me. Why is this always happening to me? Stop already. Such as is common to man. Amen. That means somebody's already been there. Amen. Can I help you here? Statement. Very true. Life is not fair. That's right. How they treat Jesus. And you expect anything different. Come on. Seriously. Please. Go ahead. Brother Frank, I'm sorry. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. All right, so watch. Come here. Step up here, hot shot. All right, so watch. Here's God. God puts you in a trial or a temptation. You ready? Watch. The only thing you know is you just started in one. Amen. You have no idea what's waiting for you when you're going through it. The Lord knows the beginning of it and knows the end of it. Yeah. And God is going to have you go through that storm until you learn what you're supposed to learn. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes I'm a little hard-headed. And trials and storms have a way of repeating themselves if I don't learn what I'm supposed to learn. But sometimes I can be dumber than a box of rocks. Mm. So here you go. Now, now here's the amazing thing. Watch while you're going through the storm, there's somebody right beside you. <laughs> I mean, you're saved here tonight, there's somebody right with you. And you don't even realize he's with you, amen? Peter forgot that it was Jesus who asked him. He said he could step out of the boat. It's me. I know who it is. It's all me. Come on, Peter. And he amen. got his eyes off of Jesus. Listen to me very carefully. Do you know how much aggravation we would save in our life if we would just keep our eyes on Jesus? Amen. It's good. And not on people. And I'll be here, people will fail you. That's right. Because you be a people, right? Amen. You ever fail somebody? Come on, seriously. So now watch, watch. And when you get out of the trial, that the trying of your faith will be more precious than gold. What he's saying is what you're going through, you're going to learn some valuable lessons. Watch. And then you're going to be able to tell how God delivered you. Come on! Are right. you serious? Amen. So the truck stuck at Scoop Expressway. I'm driving home. I'm thinking, who knows? I'm hearing things. Bing, 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 bing. Ball bearings falling out. I'm just, I'm just here like, Lord have mercy. <laughs> now I get it home. I'm going to get to my mom's house. Now, now my mother, my mom, my mother is 81 bless her soul. But my mother doesn't let anybody drive her car. Uh -oh. Now it's 12 midnight. And my mother out of clear blue says, why don't, because I was going to have my son come and drive over there and pick me up, but we probably would have got picked up about 3 o'clock in the morning because he was working. And my, my mom says out of clear blue, why don't you just take my car home? <laughs> yeah, well, that doesn't happen. Do you understand? It doesn't happen. And I'm looking at my wife. I'm saying, I'm capitalizing on this. Come on now. <laughs> First of all, I live in the, in the city, or my mom, I, I, my mom lives in the city, so to find a parking spot for that truck, <laughs> just amazing. Amen. I can't find one close by, so I go park in the right aid parking lot. Can I back that mama on over there in a big spot? Nobody's hardly even there. I'm figuring I'm setting it up for the tow truck. Come on. So now I've got to get a tow truck. I gotta get the truck picked up and start to get worked on. God puts it all together. I meet two guys, I give them a tip, I talk to them about the Lord, 
They put the truck up on the thing. I mean, all this time, I'm getting this thing all together, going to some places approved to do my truck. What the devil meant for evil, God turned around for good. Come on! Right. That's what God does, amen? Come on, devil doesn't want to do that. God does that, amen? And now watch. And so it's supposed to be covered. All right, so I'm, I'm supposed to pay $100 deductible and the scam warranty company wants to charge me per part. Are you serious? Huh. One stop, argue with the knuckleheads, but that's okay. I just, I figured, you know what? If I'm getting that kind of curveball, God will take care of it. I ain't worried about it. Amen? Seriously. Now watch, watch. So here's where we are. Watch, watch, watch. So, so watch, watch. So when you're going through what you're going through today, is the first thing that you do is rely on faith or do you rely on fear? Huh? See, because that's where we live. Yes. That's, that's where I live and that's where you live. Here's the unknown. I have no idea where this truck is going. I just know this guy's approved. Right. I mean, I, could, I dropped my truck off one time in Maine and they messed it up more than what it was when I dropped it off. And I drove all those miles with the truck that was still messed up. Going 40 miles an hour, come on, on a 9, 10 hour trip. Hey, 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 come on, listen to me. It's bigger than you. That's right. But it's not bigger than God. Amen. You can't, you ready? You can't be a person who's thinking in their mind and their heart. Here's the faith, but the bottom line, inside of us, we fear. Second point, faith, not fear. Two, pray, don't panic. Amen. Do you know how many times, if I'm living in the flesh, that I want to panic before I pray? Yeah, amen. Do you know how many times I want to think about all this stuff going on? Do you know who normally thinks like that? Women do. They do. They just do. It's a serious. I'm serious. Like, they, they're they right away thinking. You ready? Watch. What else is going to happen? Oh. And watch, watch. That God just wants you to get to a place. You ready? That you pray and don't panic. Amen. Right, here, here, here. This is hard for us to understand sometimes. We say it all the time, but do we really believe this? Is God in control or is not? Amen. So, so watch, 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 watch. So is God greater enough to not make that vehicle break down? Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. But God allowed it, right? Right. In Job's life, could God stop that? Yeah. Job had a hedge. But God took the hedge away to show to the devil how Job is going to trust. Now you listen very carefully. There's some times in life that God has just got to cut it all away. Until so you understand who really is in control. Ready? In flesh? In the flesh. we got to be in control. So we went on a vacation Bible school, and I packed up that little SUV thing to the ceiling. Didn't take the truck. <laughs> like when you open up the door, like things are starting to fall out. You know what I'm talking about, right? That's okay. God's in control. It's okay. Amen. It's okay. 24 got saved, so I guess it was okay. Amen. Come on. I'm serious. Amen. God is in control. But our natural reaction, come on, listen, is we panic before we pray. And sometimes God just wants to get to a place. The only place you can look is up. That's right. Where was Peter at? There's only one place to go, man. If he doesn't go to the right place, guess what? He's over. It's done. And how quick do you think God responded, the Lord responded to his call of help? You know, 
It blows my mind away sometimes. But listen to me. Here's how we are. God is waiting at any moment for us to say, Help! And we're too prideful to ask for help. Yeah. Come on. You ready? Watch. Here you go. Because inside of a man, we say, We got this. Yeah. And God says, No, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> you need me. <laughs> you ain't got nothing. <laughs> Seriously. But in a man, just the way it's built, man up. Seriously. So, so let me ask a question. So, so the trial you're going through or the storm you're going through, are you finding yourself praying more or panicking more? I was, I was, I was thinking about this, this church in South Carolina. Just think about it for a minute. Nine people are dead today who went to a Bible study. You think of that for a minute. The type of church we know, what kind of church it was, blew me away that they even had a Bible study on Wednesday night. And then we have independent Baptist church that thinking that we ought to stop having Wednesday night Bible study. Uh -oh. Hello? I know when I was growing up, it was called prayer meeting. Amen. Do you know what you do on Wednesday night? You pray. Yeah, man. You hear preaching, but you pray. And we're doing less and less of what we need more and more of. Yeah. That's right. And we think the answer is, we think the answer is, we got to do it like everybody else does it. We, you know, we, 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 we got to bring in the drums. We got we got to spark up the music a little bit. We, we got to sit on a little stool and share the word of God and sip a little cup of coffee. Can I help you tonight? It doesn't matter how big a crowd is. It doesn't mean that's right. That's right. Amen. Seriously, it does not mean that God's blessing that nonsense. That's right. Doesn't mean God's blessing that. Just because there's numbers doesn't mean it's blessing. Okay. You've been fooled. That's right. Amen. But we're forgetting that we need to pray more than panic. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So here's my question. When you got saved, are you different from when you got saved? No. You shouldn't have been the same person after you got saved. There should be a change. If there's no change, there's no salvation. You, you can't stay the same way you were. Because if you are what you were, then you ain't saved. That's a Pastor Unizzi statement. Not good English, but good preaching right there. Now watch, watch. Thank God we're not what we used to be. You ready? Watch. And I don't know about you, but I'm not what I should be. God's still working on me. Amen. You want to talk about working on buildings and doing construction? Man, I'm a construction person in progress. Watch, watch. But oh, one day, watch, watch. One day I'm going to be just like him. Yeah. Woo! One day, absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. I'm going to be in glory one day. I'm going to put away this old flesh. Seriously, can you imagine? And I'm going to worship the Lord for all eternity. Can you get that? Amen. I mean, that just like blows my mind away when you think about it. What are we going to do? We're going to worship the Lord. Come on. Singing like we're singing. Come on. And maybe you don't like to sing, but you're going to sing up there. Amen. Come on. <laughs> right, first is, I'm picking on my, my friend over there. Okay, here we go. Faith. Not fear. Prayer. Not panic. Third one, I'm through. Believe God. Don't blame God. That's right. Believe God. Don't blame God. I think it's important to understand that sometimes in life, when things don't go right, we want to blame God. Oh, let's, let's look a little bit. Let's, let's look a little bit. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to Acts chapter 27. Acts 27. We'll read a few verses. Acts 27. 
Acts 27. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, go go to verse numbers uh, for sake of time. Go to go to twenty seven verse seven. Acts twenty seven verse seven. And when he had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against. Sindus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed unto Crete over against Salome. And hardly passing, it came unto the place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh whereunto was the city of Lycia. Now, when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, behold, the fast was now already passed. Paul admonished them and saying, Sirs, I perceive this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading of the ship, but also of our lives. Now, now here's what happened. Let me tell you what happened. They were in a port. Paul's now going to go to Rome, and he's in a ship. And he tells the captain of the ship, he can't leave this place. And the port they were in was not commodious to winter, which means it wasn't a good place to be. So they make a decision, and they don't follow the man of God. And for the sake of time, Paul says, this ship is going to be your hurt. Everything you got on the ship is going to be gone. Watch, watch, for one specific reason. They didn't listen to the man of God. Let me just help you here. Amen. When God calls a man to be a pastor of the church, he's not called by you. Right. He's called by God. Right. <laughs> and listen very carefully. I've worked for two pastors. Now I'm working for a third. I've learned a lot of things. And one thing I learned is you don't talk or badmouth a man of God. Amen. 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 And you don't go home and fry the preacher to your kids and to your family yeah, amen. when you don't agree with something. Close your stupid mouth. Because you're now showing, come on, listen to me, you're now showing stupidity when you speak. And I don't know about you, but there's a whole lot of people I know who are really not doing good today because they just talked about and bam out the man of God. Amen. I don't know if you know this or not. You ready? Watch. There is no perfect church. That's right. That's right. Amen. And there's definitely no perfect people. Amen. And there's no perfect pastor because he's made of the same you are, same flesh, but he is the man of God. Now, I don't know why God had me go down that road, but there's a reason. You listen very carefully. To be the man of God in some kind of church, in any kind of church, is not what God has called me to do. Because to be honest with you, I don't want that job. Mm -mm. Way too much responsibility. Yes, sir. Because that man of God watches for the souls and is accountable for God for you. Amen. That's right, amen. You're not the one that doesn't sleep at night when he doesn't sleep at night because yeah. he's concerned about you. Yeah. That's right. He's not, you're not the one who has to think what the vision is for this church. That's right. God's got to lead him. Do you know how many times when people do stuff, you ready, watch. Like, for instance, ready? Let me help you. You know the people, people sometimes, when you're doing some kind of building project, everybody doesn't agree with that? That's right. You know, my wife and I say this all the time, Pest Clark's this way, just make the decision. Don't give a bunch of people decisions. Because you know what? Somebody's going to get a bad attitude. That's right. Come on. Listen. Listen, listen, listen. Here's Paul telling them what not to do, and they do it anyway. Now you watch. When this ship hits the storm, he could have said, I told you so. 
Now they got prisoners on, so now they're concerned because now the boat's going. And they're worried about the prisoners going because if the prisoners go, they lose their life. So they're going to kill them all. And Paul says if anybody else gets out of this ship, we all die. That's right. Watch, watch, watch. They started listening to the man of God after they were in the storm. <laughs> when they're losing everything, they're listening to the man of God. Can I help you here tonight? Listen to the man of God before you get into the storm. Amen. Come on now, because God's giving them wisdom for your life, and God's letting him know what he needs to tell you. Just be somebody who's humble enough to listen. Yeah, yeah amen. We're living in a day and age where people don't want to listen. That's right. Come on. Seriously. God gives him wisdom, ready, for his people. I'm not your pastor. He's your pastor. Do you think about this for a minute? You ready? Don't blame God. Believe God. That's right. You know what? The persons I know who are at church today, who got problems with people today, are people who blame God. They don't tell you about all the decisions they made yeah. without God, right? <laughs> They just, they just want to blame God. Hey, hey, stop blaming God. It's your fault, not God's fault. God's perfect, you're not. Hello? Got problems? Pfft, tons of them. So here they are. Ship's going to go under. Paul said everybody's life is going to be saved. They didn't believe him before, but they believe him now. Now watch. Paul was on the ship. If they had to listen to him and stay where they were supposed to, come on, he'd have been fine. You start to read Paul's story and you see what went on in his life. Shipwrecked, beaten. I mean, seriously, come on. And everybody gets saved, and then Paul goes into Miletus. Watch, and what happens is. You ready? They're putting sticks on a fire, and a snake comes out and bites his arm. Venomous snake. And everybody's looking at him like, Paul must have been a murderer. Yeah, they got him now. And he shakes the snake off, and he's still alive. Now they want to make him a god. That's right. Hey, hey, hey. Watch, watch. Sometimes in life, things happen. Life is not fair. Can I help you here? Get over it already. <laughs> Somebody's got it worse than you have. That's right. Amen. And I view it this way. You ready? Watch it. If I can come to church, I'm not in the hospital, I'm doing awesome. Amen. <laughs> I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Are you kidding me? Somebody asked me, how you doing? I said, I'm doing awesome. Amen. Because life is not perfect. That's right. It's got its obstacles, it's got its problems. All right, here you go. I'm through. So where are you at tonight? So in your storm... What's going on in your life? Are you somebody who has faith rather than fear? Are you somebody who prays and doesn't panic? Are you somebody are you somebody who believes God when you're going through the storm and you don't blame God for? Ready? Watch. We are the kind of people who do not like to be accountable for what we do. That's right. When I was growing up, ready? We blame my sister because <laughs> she did everything wrong. <laughs> we were so glad when we had a sister come along. We could blame everything on a sister. Oh wow! Two boys, one girl, nine years younger. We blamed everything on her. Because when we were growing up, we didn't blame it on each other, amen? We had to stick together, amen? <laughs> it's about eyes closed. I'm sure I'm finished. I appreciate your attention. In those girls' cases, don't be blaming it on their brother, amen? <laughs> now, where are you at tonight? Double through a storm? 
Maybe, maybe God's just working in your heart tonight. I don't know. I don't want that. The message was from God. There's no doubt about it. Maybe here tonight, you say, Brother Kaiser, I've got to be honest with you. To be honest with you. To be honest with you. If I die tonight, I'm not sure that I'm going to heaven. And you might have some doubt in your heart. I don't know. And you say, Brother Kaiser, to be honest with you, if I die tonight, I'm not sure if I die tonight I'm going to heaven, but God spoke to me tonight. And you by an uplifted hand say, Brother Kaiser, could you pray for me? If I die tonight, I'm not sure 100% I'm going to heaven. And maybe you by an uplifted hand say, Brother Kaiser, pray for me because I'm not sure 100%. Would you pray for me? Anybody like that? Just put your hand up that I might... I pray for you. Anybody like that tonight? If you're not 100% sure, you're going to heaven. Thank you. I appreciate that hand. Thank you. You may put it down. Thank you. Anybody else, by the way? Anybody else? You're not 100% sure. I know when I remember the day I... Thank you. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Two hands. Anybody else? You're not 100% sure you're going to heaven. Two people know that, or you and God. Come on. Anybody else like that tonight? We say, no, Brother Kaiser, to be honest with you, I've been going through a storm. To be honest with you, God's really spoken to heart tonight. Maybe tonight, you can all stand to your feet if you could. God's speaking. You want to come and talk to the Lord today. Come on. Stand to our feet if you could. That eyes closed.